page 24, Corral. 4-4 four, four time, there's one sharp in the key signature, this is in the key of G major. Make sure you can do the G major scale and the E minor scale, it also has one sharp. As far as whether you do it one octave or two octaves, I have to leave that up to you, but make sure you can at least do the scale. If you don't know it, do it one octave, learn the scales. We have a bunch of block chords. And we'd like to connect this and make it legato, but the piano won't let us, so we'll just do the best we can. In the right hand, you're here. So it's three, four, five. We're sort of protecting the top note in the right hand. We can't totally, but we do what we can on it. So it's here. And then a five, two. When I do this, I just use the thumb as an anchor and I, I come across. Here, and then a 1, 4, 2, 3, and a 1. And after you play the 1, if you want to substitute a 2, that's great too, because that way your thumb is ready for the next one. You can also just lift up, because it's the end of a phrase. They don't have phrasing marked in here, but it's the end of a musical sentence. However, we can always use the practice of finger substituting, so go ahead if you want to just put second finger on it. And then go on. Now you have a five, four. I'm gonna say, let's go and just get in position. Do a five here, one five, and then a one three. Just go ahead and this way you're in position for the rest of the line. And then a one five, and then a, the D is tied. This is the second line, third measure. The D is tied. You just play the little finger. And then while you're holding that down, your second finger to play the C, and then a one four if you can. Otherwise, if your hand's not big enough, then you have to do a one five again. So that third measure is here, here. Kind of depends on how big your hands are. The last two lines are pretty much the same as the first two lines. Left hand, two one. And then they have a It's a little awkward at the beginning the way they've got it here. There's other fingerings here, but we like that once we're in the second measure, the second finger on the G, we're in position for the rest of the line. So we kind of put up with this at the beginning just so we can be here. We want to stay in this position. Second line, you're here. two lines are the same as the first two pretty much so put them together you're here and just check your fingering on each of these chords make sure you've got the fingering just like the way you want it don't worry so much about hesitating or rhythm or anything and then here and then we can go on Once you have that, then go in and get rid of any hesitations. It's a bunch of half notes. It's, it's one, two, three, four, one, two. Just make sure it's a steady beat all the way through. The fermata at, at the end of these lines, you just hold it out a little longer. You feel how long you hold it. If you do it with a metronome, I'll just double the value. And so the first line will be four counts instead of two. The whole note, I'll hold it for eight counts instead of four. Won't that be fun? Uh -huh. And then the same with the bottom two lines. For articulation, they don't give any in here. However, I can tell you that you have musical phrases or musical sentences. I'd like to hear a little silence between them. You lift up. And then the way this is written, it just works out that every four measures is a musical sentence in this piece. Doesn't always work that way, but it works that way in this piece. So when you get to the end of a line, just like taking a breath before you go on. Otherwise, you connect it as best you can. For the dynamics, it's more for the right hand than the left, but because we're playing chords, you can play both hands pretty much the same here. I have a habit 
of bringing out the melody, which in in this piece happens to be seems to be the top note in the right hand. So I have a habit of playing that note a little louder than the others. That means that note would be moderately soft, and the others would be soft. And the second line, I'm going to crescendo up to a moderately loud. Right there. Don't be moderately loud till you're there. And then come back down. And the second two lines are the same as the first two lines. All right. It's like they could have just printed this two lines and put a repeat sign at the end. And oh, all right, it doesn't matter. For the speed, well, solemnly, just pretend you're in a church or something listening to an organ or a choir singing. A chorale is, you know, like a. You can Google what a crowd is and read all about it. However, we do have to do something with it, so we do need pedal. We're going to connect everything. That's the main job of the pedal here. However, since we're, you have lots of time to hear these chords, it'd be nice to color the chords. And to do that, then we add overtones. Well, the pedal does that. The pedal adds the overtones. Because if I just play it with clean, Or if I pedal it with overtones, see there is a slight difference in the sound there because the overtones add to it, and that's really what we need here. It's going to be overlapping pedal. So, uh, the notes go down first, and then the pedal. And when I change the pedal, and you're changing it pretty much with every half note, you'll change the pedal after you play the notes. Just up and down. Change pedal means up and down. Just up and down. Not real quicky. It's not a jerky motion. It's just up and down. So at the beginning, it's here. come up together. Please don't copy me. You learn it and you get into it. You feel it. Try and get some feeling out of this. I like to play it with you slowly. Well, it's slow anyway. So let's try it. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'm just going to play the notes here. I'll give us four counts, four quarter notes. One, two, ready, go. One, two, Hold two, three, four, off. 